The head was accidentally broken into two halves and could not be replaced. When asked what to do, the Pakistani master was sweating. The rear axle in front of him also pulled 20 tons more. The axle head was directly broken into two sections, so the owner had to take a taxi to the repair shop and let the master splice the axle head again. Since the entire fracture surface was very flat and there was no need to use a lathe for cutting, the master decisively chose to weld in the center. The main purpose was to form a convex point on the end face to facilitate subsequent docking through the hole position. Because manual welding cannot be completely centered, Fu first used a hanging needle to measure the concentricity of the axle head. On the premise that the axle head and the window claw plate are consistent, the uneven convex point can be cut more rounded. Considering that the outer diameter of the boss affects the splicing strength, Fu had to use a caliper to measure repeatedly. The boss was not centered and could not be concentric and coaxial. This is the Pakistani master's rigorous maintenance. When the outer diameter of the boss fully meets the requirements, all the extension parts must be cut into grooves. A large welding area can be more solid. In order to embed the welded boss into the rear axle, Fu also needs to use their high-end hoist chain. The heavy rear axle is fixed on a large lathe, keep it level. Although this end face does not affect the drilling of the axle core, in order to match the color of the axle head groove for welding, the slightly deformed part also needs to be cut. Only in this way can the internal void of the weld bar be avoided. For the bulge welded on the end of the axle head, Fu also needs to use a drill to perform the drilling operation. The outer diameter and length of the bulge are used as the processing basis. The rear axle is processed with consistent data. Although this repair looks relatively simple, each step of the operation is inseparable from accurate data. The master uses a caliper to confirm the hole. The axle head can be spliced at the hole position. Because there is no margin for the docking of the two, the thrust of the window ejector is also needed. The axle head is slowly embedded in the appropriate position to prevent the length of the spliced rear axle from becoming shorter. Then use a high hardness welding rod to weld the groove. The gap left makes up for the cutting thickness, which can make the cross section have more welding points. Because the outer side of the axle head needs to be installed with the axle travel, the rough welding bar needs to be cut to restore the original appearance data of the axle head. After the measurement of the high precision micrometer, the surface of the Hanba meets the axle travel requirements. Then this large semi-trailer unpowered rear axle can continue to pull the trouble. This kind of maintenance technology is really amazing. 